Hi everyone, Darren here. And today we've got Tom's Mini in my garage for some tuning and other work. And it's a uh, 90 Mayfair with the 998 high compression motor and HS4 carb. Still is using the ballasted ignition system with ballasted coil. And uh, you know, pretty much all standard stuff in here. Um, I was about to start doing the tuning, but he does have a pretty bad exhaust leak, so I'm going to go ahead and pull intake manifold off to do the exhaust manifold gasket because it's, it's basically split on cylinder number four. So I'm going to take care of that first before I do any tuning. So we'll see what this thing turns out to, to be like once I get in it. Um, hopefully it doesn't need much. Like I said, I, I drove it. It drives pretty nicely. It's a little lean feeling off the line, but um, overall, I think I think it's it, it drives fairly well. Um, we'll just have to see. Like I said, I'll, I'll probably check the uh, check the distributor advance curve and check everything. Um, but first step is I've got to pull off this and fix this exhaust manifold gasket. Well. I've gone ahead and replaced the uh, exhaust and intake manifold gasket here and I went ahead and pulled the carb off because I noticed that it has some really, really sloppy, uh, sloppy throttle shafts, bushings. So I'm going to have to go ahead and take care of this before I do any, any tuning. Um, you can see that blown exhaust manifold gasket is here. So I'm going to give some attention to this and do a do a rebuild or a partial rebuild. But I've got to correct these bushings because they're really worn out. Well, I've got this car ball rebuilt and uh, fresh throttle shaft bushings, new seals, etc. Uh, it's all hooked up. New, new breather hose here, uh, new fuel line with filter over there, the correct size. So... Um, this thing's pretty much ready to get fired up. Now, I still have to go through the ignition system and check check what's going on here. So I'm going to do that before I fire it up next. Well, I've decided to start doing a valve adjustment. And I'm glad I did because when I checked, this car uh, was at 16 thou. And it should be at 12. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all these and adjust them all first. Um, before I move on to the ignition system. Uh, interestingly enough, this is what the plugs look like. Um, very clean, very nice. So, um, I'll have to see what the fueling is like, but these look very, very nice. And this is cylinder one. Um, here's an example of cylinder three. Super clean. Anyway. I'll finish doing the valves and move on. Well, I put the old plugs back in. I did gap them to 25 thou because this is a, um, a points distributor. Even though it's running the ballast system, it is a points system. So these get 25 thou. Um, also, this is not variable to well, so that's another reason why I stick with them. But anyway, I stuck those resistive plugs in. I'm going with them for now. Um, the old wires, I checked resistance, these are about 6K each lead, so I went ahead and replaced them with, with this set here. You know, obviously these are the new power spark type, just to lower the ignition wire resistance a bit. Um, once I start it, I'll be able to check the ignition timing, but I also need to check the dwell angle, make sure it's getting full dwell out of this points distributor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. Well, I've got it running. And you can see this is the dwell angle, it's only 30 degrees out of what should be 55. So I need to go ahead and adjust the dwell to get some more uh, coil charge time. Well, I've got it back up and running. And uh, idle seems pretty, pretty de decent. Um, I tried adjusting the dwell in here, but I ran out of adjustment at 30 degrees. So. Either the points in this system are worn, or the breaker can't be adjusted far enough, or the cam lobe's worn out, but whatever it is, I can't achieve enough dual angle out of this to reach 54 degrees. I can only get 31, so most likely I'll end up changing out this distributor for one that I've curved. But it sounds sweet right now. 
Well, after checking the timing, it's pretty clear I'm at the change at this distributor. So uh, at idle is 10 degrees, and then it went to 14 degrees at 2K, and then it was 19 degrees at 4K. So if I adjust this to give, say, 30 degrees all in at 4,000 RPMs, I'll have to add another, you know, 11 degrees to the timing, which would put the idle timing at 21 degrees, um, and then 2K would be at 25 degrees. So the the curve on this is 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 bad. And um, I also noticed that uh, the air fuel ratio leans out pretty badly above 3,000 RPMs. In fact, I couldn't even get up into the 5,000 range when I was testing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, custom profile this needle, or at least look for a, a richer needle to start with. Um, so a few more changes, and then we'll get back into the, uh, the high performance -y bits. Well, I... Uh, We've got an AEM needle in here, and the standard needle actually seems to prove uh, very well on this car. Um, uh, you'll see in a minute. The, uh, this is the air fuel ratio gauge, and it's reading in lambda, which is percentage of oxygen. So right now it's saying that I'm four or five percent uh, richer than stoichiometric ratio. But anyway, uh, just watch this number as I rev it all the way up to about 6,000 RPM, and you'll see it's pretty much at this point the whole way through on the RPM range. And I'm going to stop at two, three, four, five thousand RPMs as best I can, but I think this thing sounds amazing. So, now I'm going to do uh, a rev test with the air filter housing on. He does have a Canon air filter element inside of here, but this is the stock air box with the uh, little cowbell for the uh, air diverter. So I'm going to go ahead and rev this up and see if there's any places where the fueling starts going too rich. Before we were in the 9795 range, pretty much all the way up at 6,000 RPMs. So what I noticed there is that between five and 6,000 RPMs, this was going into 0.85 range. So this is definitely choking out just a bit at that upper issues. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes in this air box to uh, free up some airflow and improve that, that top end just a, just a little bit. So I've gone ahead and Swiss cheesed the air box, as you can see, um, you know, the air filter still filters the air, but I've increased the ability for this housing to breathe. So this should correct that high speed uh, enrichment problem that I was having. So now that I've drilled this air box, let's go ahead and repeat this test. Uh, before between four and six, this was going into the eights. And you know, before I put the air filter back on, uh, this was staying in the 0.9596 range at that RPM point. So hopefully we're back at this, this place uh, at high RPMs. So as we saw, uh, it wasn't going into the eights anymore. It was staying in the 9.5 range. So that just goes to show you that these air filter housings can be restrictive uh, in the upper end, even with a good uh, filter inside. 
So this is why you need to check and see what, what your airflow is doing and, and what your uh, fueling is doing at high RPM with the cover off and then test this separately. But I do think that this engine is running fairly smoothly. Um, it seems to respond very well. It's responded very well to the tuning. And uh, I think it's going to be a very, very nice drive. I'm going to go ahead and take it out for a test drive here later today and, and see how it drives. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. So on this AEM needle, I actually ended up coming in and uh, doing some custom profiling at the, the top end. And uh, hopefully that would be enough. Like I said, it drove really well. That just seemed like I needed just a bit more fuel at the top end, so I went ahead and modified this one. After modifying the AEM needle for full throttle and acceleration, the, uh, the car drove a lot nicer afterwards, and I think this thing is pretty much ready to go. So I went ahead and put the, uh, the little splash shield back on the ignition system, make sure it doesn't get wet. And um, normally I would deliver this car to the customer or have them come pick it up at my place. But uh, in this case, we're going to go to the, uh, the big mini meet happening in July. And so I'm going to go with him as part of a convoy uh, to uh, South Dakota and back. So we'll be able to get some road tests on this car and uh, see what kind of performance it has as well as mileage. So stay tuned to find out what the results are on that. Well, we've returned from our trip, and Tom's Mini actually ended up getting the best mileage of all of the convoy. This, uh, this car happened to get 45 miles per gallon average, and on one stretch, it got 50.6. Uh, These are U.S. miles per gallons. So, um, overall, pretty pleased. Uh, we were doing about 70, 75 miles an hour most of the time, so these are all cruising miles. Um, yeah, just, just pleasant pleasant car to drive, and um, overall just a very efficient, very clean running uh, 998 motor. So, this is an example of what, what can be achieved through uh, through good parts and, and tuning. So, if you guys appreciated this video, let me know in the comments below, and um, hope you guys liked it. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in another episode at some point here in the future.